There is just nothing like a student being able to validate what they learned in a realistic simulation. And that is exactly what we have here. Let's take a look at this example where we are playing the role of an IT administrator for a small corporate network, and we need to find specific information about the packets being exchanged on the network using Wireshark. So we're going to be asked to use Wireshark to capture packets from the ENP2S0 interface, and we're going to try some various filters, and then we're going to need to be able to respond to some questions correctly. So let's go ahead and start the lab. And you'll notice this is going to drop us in an extremely realistic environment with an operating system of Kali Linux in place. And we can see that there are some applications that are listed here. And if we hover our mouse over this application right here, we see that it's Wireshark. Please note that if a learner went in and, you know, chose ZenMap, that is going to launch for them to really add to the realism of the simulation. But in our case, we need to go to Wireshark and we need to, I'm going to go ahead and maximize it so that we can see it better. And there is that interface that we were asked to capture packets from. So just as I would in the actual Wireshark network analyzer interface, with that interface selected, I'm going to go up and I'm going to choose under the capture menu, the start button, and note, we are now capturing packets. And notice in the status bar of the Wireshark interface, we can see the incrementing number of packets that we are capturing, just as would occur in an actual packet capture utilizing Wireshark. So I've got enough packets, certainly. I'm going to go ahead and choose the stop button on the toolbar in order to stop the capture. And now we're going to try some of the filters that we must run. For example, net 192.168.0.0. And we notice exactly what this filter is going to do. It is going to filter out the output of captured packets so that they all involve either a source or a destination in the 192.168 zero zero network space so notice we have 192.168.0.36 uh, communicating to 192.168.0.34 and certainly that makes its way into this filter because those are both source and destinations from the 192.168.0 subnet notice in this case we match this packet with the filter because we are sourcing it from the 192.168.0 subnet even though we are destining the traffic for the 65, 66, 67, 68 destination. Let's try another filter as they are instructing us to do. This time we'll use the keyword host and we will say 192.168.0.34. And this time we can see that we are filtering for traffic that is either sourced from that exact IP address or traffic that is destined for that exact IP address. And finally, we are asked to perform a filter of TCP contains password. So we are going to be looking for TCP packets, and we're going to be looking for any of those that in the data of the packet mention the word password. And we can see that we have met that exact criteria. We have found a packet that matches those conditions. And note, we can see a clear text password inside the data payload of that packet. So we are seeing a real issue here on the network that Wireshark has helped us discover. Now, as if that was not enough for the learner, this incredibly realistic exercise, there's also the ability to answer questions on what the learner has just accomplished. And notice the first question, what's the effect of the net 192.168.0.0 filter in Wireshark? We saw that that was going to allow us to filter on packets with either a source or destination address in that network. What's the effect of the host 192.168.0.34 filter? We said that would allow us to filter on packets 
that involve 192.168.034 either in the source or the destination. And finally, a challenge that asks us for that password that we were able to see in clear text, and that was the stay out password with some character substitution and some special characters to attempt to make it more secure. And that was quite a secure password, I might say, but the only issue is they were transmitting it over the network in clear text. That's a big no-no, and that's why we were able to see it in our Wireshark capture. Notice we did great in this exercise, scoring six of six in our performance and making sure that we answered every single one of the questions correctly. <laughs>